training a two-way alert for sounds, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and other medical alerts. Two-way sound alerts are trained when you want a dog to alert you to a specific sound and you want her to lead you to the source. It doesn't matter which you train first, whether to alert you first or take you to the location of the sound, as long as the order is consistent. Your dog will need to know two previously taught behaviors. One-way alert, taught in our one-way alert video. Show me, taught in the shell game video. Train and practice the show me behavior. You may want your dog to paw or nose the object or sit or lay down beside it, etc. Jessie Paw indicates a treat in a container for the shell game. I'll use this since she already knows it. Add distance to the indication in small increments. It's the indication behavior, the paw touch, that I'm cooking for here. Sliding it adds some excitement for Jessie, so she learns to seek it out in the early stages of adding distance. Next, send her to a stationary bowl. This is what it looks like after starting right in front of her and moving it away in small steps. Show me around a corner. Show me! Here she learns that even Show though me. she can't see it, she can still find and indicate it. Girl. Move the show me to other rooms. Jessie, show me! Start with the dog in the same room as the bowl, then send her from Girl. the next room. Place the sound at nose level and train upwards, if you will need your dog to show you sounds that are located higher than floor level. Jessie, show me! Generalize the behavior to several different containers and objects. This step is important Show if you're me. planning on training your dog to do more than one kind of alert, a sound and a medical, for example. Show me. She will learn that no matter the size, shape, or color the, of the container or object, Show she me. needs to indicate its location. These are face cloths. Since the indication is what I want, I let her see where I put the tree. You can skip this step if you're just training one type of alert. Pair the sound with the show me behavior. You can start with cueing show me if you need to. But Jessie made that connection on her own. Since she's so eager to indicate, I transfer the behavior to just the alarm clock itself. For a dog that lays down as her show me, have her lay near the door if a knock on the door was the cue. <laughs> Here I try for the first time to see if the knock will trigger Jessie's down. After some thinking, she does it. The response isn't as automatic as I'd like, so I do more practice with cueing. Add distance to the show me behavior. Start about two feet away from the sound and cue show me. You may need to do many repetitions at each distance until your dog is consistent. Toss the treat to the starting location to reposition your dog for the next repetition. I place the clock on a low stool and start nearby, Show backing me. away as she is successful. Show me. Next, 
Next, I start moving with her towards the clock. Show me! Good girl! Show me! Good! We train it from different angles in the room. Good! Add distractions one at a time, but decrease distance to help your dog succeed. Kemba's presence isn't enough to distract Jessie from her job. Combine the show me behavior with the sound alert. The first few times, it helps if you review both the sound alert and the show me behavior separately. Show me. We most recently trained the show me behavior. Good girl. Because we haven't trained the one-way alert for a while, we review it with the handler in different positions in the room. Combine the two behaviors, starting at a very short distance and no distractions. I am watching TV. Jessie comes out of her crate and alerts me. I reward her and cue, show me. And she does a very nice paw indication. A different angle and she's fast asleep when this one rings. Nice firm nose nudge. She makes eye contact with me, then leads me to the sound. Good girl! Good girl! That was very good! Increase distance, distractions, and generalize to other locations as before. Two friends are over, so we practice with them as distractions. <laughs> Jessie hears the sound and looks at me. I try to avoid looking at her as I want her to do the nose nudge on her own. She forgets to paw indicate, but my criteria is lower since I have added the distractions and distance together. Try to control as many factors as you can to help your dog succeed. Practice each of the one-way and show-me behaviors first in the new environments, then combine in short distances. Helpful tip! Train your dog to be persistent at both the alert and the show me. There will be times when you are tired, distracted, etc. and ignore your dog. She should keep on trying to get your attention. Jessie tends towards being a gentle dog, so she has to be taught to push harder and push again when ignored. Okay. Good girl. Good I ask girl. for a little more each time. You can either use a repeat cue, such as again, repeat the cue, yeah, or just wait girl. and the dog will likely nudge yeah, you out of frustration. Girl. What a girl. Try to accurately recreate your behavior when distracted. Avoiding eye contact is a common human behavior. Again? Give the repeat cue while looking again. away. When your dog is good at that, start fading the extra cue. Here I use the touch cue instead of the again cue. See how as her frustration builds, she pushes Good harder? Girl. Good girl. This is called surfing Good the extinction girl. burst to get a stronger response. Add the persistence cue into the chain of behaviors by ignoring your dog occasionally when practicing one and two-way alerts. Making your response unpredictable will make the persistence behavior stronger. After much practice in the house and yard, it's time to take the two-way alert to public places. Good luck! <laughs>